Hello Sunday School students and welcome to Sunday School Online. I'm your teacher for this session, Deaconess Robin Miller, and I come to you by way of the Greater Bethlehem Temple Apostolic Church located in Cincinnati, Ohio, in the community of Northside, where our pastor is Bishop James Chapman, our First Lady, Lady Robin Chapman, and where we proudly proclaim as a church family, there is a God in Bethlehem and Jesus is his name. As is my custom, I'm going to go over announcements while people are still coming into class. So for our announcements, please remember that there are additional Sunday school or Christian education classes on our YouTube channel which is GBTAC Cincinnati. Please go to that channel, access those videos. They are wonderful. We have videos for our primary students where Sister Casey Fisher is taking her students on an adventure. We have Sister Tere Deloge, who is putting something on our older students' mind. And adults, you have not been left out. Your class takes place live every Sunday morning as the Lord allow allows at 9 o'clock a.m. through our telechurch format. So please go to our GB. TAC.org website so that you can get that information and join in. We have wonderful Cracker Jack teachers that break down that word and allow us to use it, understand it for life application. There is power in the word. Additionally, while you're on that website, please get two other telephone numbers. One is our prayer line. Our pastors are standing by to pray with you. You are not in this alone. So please call with your prayer requests. Please call with your questions of salvation. Please call and allow them to speak and pray with you. The other telephone number that I encourage you to get is that of our office telephone number. Get our office telephone number, call, make an appointment, speak with our pastor, let him know that you have been stopping by the, the temple. Allow him to introduce himself and give yourself the opportunity to introduce yourself. Please remember to like, to subscribe, and this is your cordial invitation to join us for additional services. Now, we not only have Sunday School Online, but we have our live worship service or our live worship experience that takes place every Sunday morning as the Lord allows at 11 o'clock a.m. Now, that isn't just on our YouTube format or our YouTube platform, but it also takes place on Facebook, on Instagram on our gbtac.org website. Please utilize any one of those features or those platforms so that you can join service in person, or excuse me, not in person, but virtually. And also know that we're having in-person services. That is also true of our Bible class that takes place Tuesday nights at seven o'clock p.m. So there is no excuse for not having the word of God. So it is time for our review. Last week, we talked about Jesus Heals a Servant. Google.com defined healing as the process of making or becoming sound or healthy again. We need completeness, wholeness, soundness, health in all parts of us. And God is willing to give us that, to grant that to us. Now, on the reputation of Jesus, a centurion sought healing for his servant. He exercised his faith for the healing of one that was dear to him. We can also exercise, excuse me, exercise our faith for the healing of others. And I referred you to James chapter 5, verses 15 through 16, as it tells us that we can be healed by the prayer of faith. Our homework was to read ahead for next week's lesson and also to read the scriptures that I referenced in our conclusion, which was James chapter 5, verses 15 through 16. 
And here they are, verse 15, And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up, and if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Verse 16, Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much, much, excuse me, and that was from the King James Version. Now, you know what I'm going to say, and if you don't, then I'm going to say it. If you did your homework, kudos to you. You are my homework hero. I very much appreciate you putting in the effort, putting in the time, showing that discipline to do your homework and reaping the reward of knowing the word for yourself. It makes a difference to know the word for yourself. And if you did not do your homework, then I invite you do your homework and become a part of one of my da 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 da, da homework heroes. It makes a difference. King David said, thy word have I hid, have I purposely placed, made an area for, hid it in my heart that I may not sin, commit wrong, trespass against thee. It's important to know the word for yourself. So this week, our lesson is Jesus sends demons away. The lesson text is Matthew chapter 8 verses 23, excuse me, 23 through 34. The golden text is Matthew chapter 8 verse 29. And we also know our golden text is also our focus verse. The aim for this lesson is Jesus has power over all things. The reason why we're looking at this lesson, this is the point of the matter. So, in continuing the aim that Jesus has power over all things, why is this significant? Who is Jesus? So the answers that were shouted out, they match what's on <laughs> my screen. So I'm going to pretend like you really, really know and that you didn't pick up the answer that I already had on the screen. So we're going to go like that, okay? So Jesus is Lord. He is God manifested in the flesh. In the Bible, he is referred to as the Son of God. Everything that we see, everything that we don't see, it has been created by God. And I refer you to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, and John chapter 1, verse 3. There are additional verses. Those are just the ones that I included for our lesson today. The creation is not equal to its creator. This is an important point. And you can look at that in Isaiah chapter 49, verse 9, and Romans chapter 9, verse 21. So some examples that I have for you in this is that just like children are not equal to their parents, nieces and nephews are not equal to aunts and uncles, siblings are not equal to cousins, the creation is not equal to its creator. There's also uh, an incorrect thought process out there that God and Satan are equal or that the opposite of God is Satan, that is incorrect. The devil and those that choose to follow him, they are not equal to God. They are like angels like humans, like animals, like insects, like everything that you see and don't see have been created by God. And the creation is not equal to its creator. So please remember that. Power 
means strength, force, might. It is the ability to do or to act. It is. It has an authority, right, control, and influence. God has power over all things, not just as creator God, but as sovereign Lord, as self-existing one. So what's going on in our lesson? Jesus is leaving Capernaum, where we saw him last. He healed the centurion's servant. He has also healed other people of sicknesses and cast out spirits from them. We see him moving from one area to another one where he ministered to the crowds. And he is moving by ship. Now, while in transit, while he's traveling on this ship, this boat, this sea becomes very stormy or otherwise known as tempestuous. Now, this could have had or could have ended in a source of destruction for this ship and the people on board, otherwise known as the travelers. And this caused great fear for the people that were traveling with Jesus. They went to Jesus. And I'm just going to pause right here. What an example that they show us in relating this in what was going on in their story, in their life journey. That when they did not have the the resolution themselves, when they had come to the end of themselves, when it looked like everything was just out of their hands, they knew come to the master. They knew that they were able to go to the Lord. And I love that example that we see here in our lesson, just a very brief pause in showing us that whatever is going on in our lives, we can come to the Lord and he will receive us. Now they went to Jesus and after that, He saved them by verbally rebuking the wind and the waves. This caused the mark, excuse me, this caused the disciples to marvel at Jesus. And you can go to verse 27 for this. They were still learning who Jesus was. They called him master. They called him Lord. But they were still in awe of the many examples that they were showing or being shown from his life. When they reached the other side, there were two men that were possessed, meaning inhabited by demons, and they came out of a tomb. Now, just to pause right here, this tomb that they came out of, these two men were rather wild. These spirits that were inside of them, the demon spirits, they caused them to be a terror to the people that would try to pass by that area. The Bible says so that none can pass by. But when Jesus came, he did not pass them by. He saw, knew, recognized their need, and he healed them by casting out the demons. Just by way of explanation, demons are wicked evil spirits they are also referred to as fallen angels and you can go to revelation chapter 12 verse 4 to look at that so i said that jesus healed these men just to circle back we talked about healing in our last lesson this is the the slide from our last lesson part of it and to remind you that Healing is a part of wholeness. It is a part of completeness. And that is what Jesus gave this, these men by healing them of and removing or casting out the wicked spirits. They were made whole. They were made complete. They were given soundness. They now had peace without the presence of these wicked, terrible, evil, I was looking for that word, evil spirits. And they were made whole in every part or in uh, that part of themselves. They were free of the demon possession. So Jesus healed them. This takes us to our golden text, Matthew chapter eight, verse 29. 
In the King James Version, it reads, And behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? In the International Children's Bible Version, it reads this way, The two men came to Jesus and shouted, What do you want with us, Son of God? Do you come here to punish us before the right time? So in looking at this golden text, and behold, they cried out saying, what have we to do with thee, Jesus, our son of God? So we talked about power, authority being connected with power earlier. This st statement spoken through the men by the demons is an acknowledgement of their recognition of who he is. In this statement, we also see the rhetorical question of what relationship, what connection do we have with you? In other words, light does not have relationship or communion with darkness. In the King James Version, the latter part of that verse, Art thou come hither to tor torment us before the time? The demons recognize they will be judged of all wrong they committed by Jesus and know that that time isn't now. Then Now they may not be recognizing the ministry of Jesus, but they understand that the appointed time is not now for that judgment. The Bible continuously speaks of an appointed time, an established time, a time that is coming, a set time. That is true for all things. And that is also true for judgment. Bishop Chapman, he teaches us that don't just look at this as in the negative. There is a set time for judgment. I mean, in general, I'm sorry, not this scripture. I don't want to give um, an incorrect perception. But in looking at scripture, don't just look at the negative, like the set time for judgment. There is also another part of that. Just like there's a set time for judgment, there is a set time for reward. And the children of God can look forward to a set time of reward for being God's child, God's obedient child, for living according to his commandments as he gave us power to do so. We can't do it in and of ourselves. We do it by the power of God. And just like these demons recognize that there was a set time for their judgment, there is also going to be a set time for reward for the children of God. That was just an extra that I wanted to throw in there as a positive. <laughs> It is interesting that the demons recognize who the Lord is. Now we are able to do the same as we have the presence and the word of God. And I just want to encourage you and remind you as one of my final points that if Jesus is in you, you have that same power and authority. He, meaning Jesus, has not changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. In our conclusion, Jesus has power over all things. The creation is not equal to its creator. Everything seen and unseen has been created by God. God has power over all things, not just as creator God, but as sovereign Lord, self-existing one. The devil is not equal to God. He, like the angels, like us, is a created being by God. The demons recognize who the Lord was. If Jesus is in you, you have that same power and authority. He has not changed. So for homework on your to-do list, it is read ahead for next week's lesson. 
and also read the scriptures that were referenced in our lesson today. Now we have quite a few this time, but they're only single scriptures. We have Genesis chapter one, verse one. We have John chapter one, verse three. We have Isaiah chapter 45, verse nine. We have Romans chapter 9 verse 21 and we have Revelation chapter 12 verse 4. Now I know I said those rather quickly but you have the slide and you can pause this video so that you, so that you can write them down or refer back to them. Next week we're going to be discussing Peter heals a crippled man. Our lesson text will be found in Acts chapter 3 verses 1 through 16 and our golden text or our focus verse will be Acts chapter 3 verse 6. Thank you so much for having joined me for Sunday School Online. It is a pleasure to come to you for these lessons. I encourage you, invite your family, invite your friends to join you on the next time. And I leave you with my borrowed saying from Veggie Tales: God made you special and he loves you very much. Lord willing, we will see you again on the next time. Bye.